Hey, I got a brief video today. I've learned something about the way the two batteries in this thing work together. And of course, I've learned it in the natural way that I always learn things, by doing something wrong. Again, it won't take long today, but let's get started. So as you can see, I've got the jumper cables attached here. I'm, I've got a small 12 volt battery and it is kind of the, the master control battery. I don't know, that's probably not a very good way of saying it, but this battery has to have charge to be able to get the rest of the system to work. It's enough to control the ignition switch. I, I'm gonna call it an ignition switch. I guess it, that's really not a very good name for it in a battery system, but it controls the electronics. When you turn the key on, um, it, it enables the rest of the system to work. This switch here is the master 12 volt switch to turn it off and on. So when I got it off here, that means that the 12 volt battery, that little one I just showed you, is, is not being discharged. This is what I didn't understand. I didn't re realize that it was related to the 12 volt battery. I thought it was related to the large battery. I've allowed this tractor to sit here for approximately four weeks now. I think I moved it just a little bit a week ago thinking we were gonna get a snow. I equipped it with the Artillion blade, some hydraulics. I can show you that in a, in a minute as well. Turns out we didn't get much snow again, so I wasn't really even able to use it. But I had left this on and every time I tested, the battery charge was the same, about 85, 86%. So I thought, well, I'm not seeing any discharging. What's the point of turning this switch to the off position? It's in the off position now. Unfortunately, that was my misunderstanding. This switch controls that 12 volt battery. And apparently there is some continual drain on that 12 volt battery and you have to flip this switch to off if you're gonna be leaving it for the long term. I had to call a support team for this. I mean, the, the symptoms were that the whole tractor seemed to be dead. And I, I thought, well, this didn't make sense to me as the battery, had, overall battery, had had a consistent charge at 86% every time I checked it. I just didn't think it would discharge all of a sudden. Well, it didn't. Once we put a little bit of charge in this 12 volt battery, it was able to fire up and run normally. Now, What's interesting is that the large battery is not capable of, of giving a quick charge to the 12 volt battery. That's why I'm still hooked up here to the 3046R. It will maintain the battery, the support team told me, but it won't really charge it. And you can kind of tell how that would be the case here because it's got very small cables and very small you know, connectors or, or uh, terminals on the battery. So it's not gonna charge or discharge it very fast from the tractor. I don't know what the amperage it is it, it sends to the battery, but it's not gonna be much. And I find that a little bit odd. Yeah, that, that you would think that it would go ahead and charge that battery back up quickly and, and have it ready to go. But that's not the way it, it is designed. Now, it will maintain it. So if we don't let it get completely discharged like I did in this case, it should be fine. Probably the most puzzling and maybe frustrating aspect of this is that when I plug in the charging cable, the main charging cable for the large battery, it won't charge, won't charge at all. The 12 volt battery has to have charge to begin the charging of the main battery. Again, it's doing some electronic controls uh, and, and I think allows that fan to come on during charging. And so those electronics have to be able to run before it will even charge the large battery. It's imperative that you keep this 12 volt battery charged and use that switch on the side to turn it off when the tractor's not gonna be in use. I might as well go ahead and show you the snow setup I was going to use. If we get another chance, I will use it yet this winter, but uh, who knows, it's, it's February. You just don't know whether we'll get more snow or not around here. Uh, it's kind of hit and miss in this area of central Indiana. This is the Artillion blade that attaches to the Artillion fork frame. I took it off my deer fork frame and put it on the skid steer quick attach fork frame and it, and it fits fine on this tractor. Now, for the hydraulics, I actually uh, just plugged them in here and I ran these hoses all the way to the rear SCV. Let's go around there and take a look. 
So this is actually kind of a temporary uh, approach, right? These are actually the two hoses that I made on the video the other day where I was showing my hydraulic skills. <laughs> no, my new hydraulic uh, hose making equipment. I just put slightly different ends on them to be able to use here. I'll eventually put them on that cylinder that I actually made them for. So I just ran them over the top of the tractor. I came right around here and plugged them into the rear SCV, which my understanding is it's standard. This is the control for the rear SCV right here. Um, and there is a flow control right here on one side of it, which I thought was quite unique. Gave me a little bit of a confusion at one point because I was able to angle the blade really fast one direction and the other direction it went very slow. Turns out this flow control just needed to be adjusted. So that's kind of a neat feature. Some of you are gonna complain, hey, too much talk, why don't you get to using the tractor? Well, it's been cold. I can't do regular work with it. And I did have a project in mind today, but as soon as I encountered this, I wanted to let you know. So understand, I, I promised all along that as we learned things about this machine, we would share them. And that's what's going on here today. I thought this one was worthy. The way those two batteries work together, it's, it's an, an interesting and worthy aspect of this tractor that's different from any other tractor. You might view it as more complicated, but I think it's just different. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are His, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. You have to come out. I'm not going to do that. Gotcha. Gotcha. You always get out here and you get all scared. She is like that. I mean, she doesn't have that safety net, right?